Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Nick Tan Chats. My name is Nick Tan and on today's episode, I'll be chatting with you guys about something called Lost by Peter Turner, released by Mindhouse. So hi again guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for showing up, thanks for tuning in and thanks for spending some time with me today. So on to this episode, I'll be chatting with you about something called Lost uh, that is released by uh, Peter Turner uh, along with the guys over at Mindhouse. All right, now this has been actually quite uh, a highly requested episode. You know, I've had you know quite a number of uh, messages and emails uh, requesting for uh, my thoughts right uh, on this particular project you know and uh, it's taken me some time to uh, get down to it you know but um, here we go I'm doing the episode for you guys today so Louis Laval uh, really kindly got in touch with me and uh, shared this particular project with me and I've had a couple of weeks you know now to kind of digest uh, the material so uh, let's you know jump right into it so this particular project uh, features the work of Peter Turner all right and um, well in full disclosure, right, I'm not familiar with uh, Peter's material, all right? I mean, I know of him for his, you know, incredible, you know, reputation, all right? But I've just not, um, you know, studied his work that, that much, all right? But I will say that uh, I was really happy, actually, to go through this particular project, all right, called Lost, all right? Because it is full of really practical material, practical ideas as well, all right, which kind of surprised me, you know, because based on my understanding, you know, of um, Peter, right, I think he's really known for his his propless stuff, you know, it's like nothing written down and he just, he just knows things about you, right? But this particular project, you know, it's just really practical material, you know, which um, I, I'll definitely be using. In fact, I have used, okay, because uh, one of the routines that uh, is shared uh, in this project is now actually the second to last item uh, in my current theatre show that I'm performing, all right? And I'll, I'll tell you uh, which one that is when we get to it. So uh, this project actually has a theme for it as well, all right? And the theme is that of, well, what would you do if you lost your luggage, you know, and you're asked, you know, to perform a full show on stage? This idea uh, has been explored by other performers as well. You know, there've been books and, um, you know, PDFs and uh, videos as well, you know, that have been released um, regarding this kind of a thing, right? I think this particular project shows you uh, how Peter Turner would go about it. So Lost is available from Mindhouse, and uh, when you purchase Lost, you will get access to um, a whole range of videos, right? They are kind of split up into different uh, individual videos, right? Chapters, I suppose. Um, and I quite like that, actually, because it makes learning really easy, and it's really easy to kind of navigate and, and jump to whichever section you wish to look at. On the main videos themselves, uh, you will have Peter Turner, uh, who is joined by Louis Laval, and, um, you know, together they will discuss the material that uh, Peter Turner wishes to share on this project. He will cover a good range of uh, mentalism material, which I will uh, discuss with you in some detail a little later on. Peter will kind of demonstrate uh, the effects uh, for Lewis right, in the studio itself, uh, and then he will go into the explanations as well. At the end of the project as well, there'll be like, uh, I think a 45 minute uh, section called the Jam Session, where Lewis, uh, along with Peter, you know, will just bounce off further ideas and thoughts uh, on the material that is covered on this project. So I did mention that this project is about what would you do if you lost your luggage, right? And you're asked to do a show. And this whole project begins with Peter taking you on a little shopping spree, you know, just uh, going to a couple of shops and he will talk you through a couple of, um, you know, his thought processes as to what are the stuff that he's buying. Okay, so he will buy all the stuff with, I think, a total value of like $13.80, something like that, you know, a really small budget. And he picks up all the stuff that he needs and then from there, you know, uh, he brings all the stuff back to the studio. Louis and Peter will then dissect, all right, everything that has been picked up uh, on his little shopping spree. Uh, and then Peter will uh, go straight into the routines that he wishes to share. So there are uh, five main chapters uh, that are in this project. Uh, and I will now just kind of briefly discuss with you uh, what is covered, okay, so that you know what to expect as you go into it. So the first chapter is called uh, The Books, okay, uh, and this uh, particular chapter Peter teaches you uh, a really simple and effective uh, book test sequence, all right, done with two books that he picked up from, you know, like a pound store or a dollar store, right? Uh, and these two books are just regular books, you know, they're ungaffed. And in fact, you can 
perform um, this routine with any two books that you happen to pick up, right, in your friend's place, or um, if you're at a bookstore, perhaps you you can really just go into this pretty much impromptu. Peter will uh, share with you uh, his handling for the Hoy book test, okay, and then he will also teach you uh, Mark Paul's Triple A book test as well, okay, and then he will kind of combine all these techniques. Uh, into a, a longer routine, all right, a full routine uh, that features the use of these two books. The second section uh, is called The Cards, okay? And in this uh, particular section or chapter, um, Peter teaches you uh, a card routine, all right? A, a thought of card routine. So um, briefly what happens is, you know, you, you have a deck of cards, you spread the cards out really quickly and just close it up, have a spectator just think of one, okay? And from there, you are able to quickly, you know, work out the card and name the card as well. Okay, now Peter uh, does mention this, so I think I can say this as well. Um, this kind of an idea is based on, well, the, there are other things out there, you know, that have been done before, obviously, right? Uh, things like the Mind Power deck, um, the Radar deck. Uh, I think recently, I, well, not that recent, but I, I've reviewed something else called uh, Divine and Conquer as well. You know, so it's kind of based along those kinds of ideas. Uh, but Peter shows you how you can put together a system uh, like that as well, uh, quite easily and quite, you know, inexpensively, you know, with just regular cheap playing cards, all right, that you can pick up at a store. And um, the method is, is, is a known method, all right, but you do need to get kind of comfortable with with it, you know, and you need to know it really well, right, to, in order to perform it really smoothly so that it comes across, you know, deceptive, right, and it feels like mind reading, I think. There is a section uh, called the billets, okay, and uh, in this particular section, well, Peter shares with you some of his thoughts on uh, billet work, okay, there will be a performance of um, Bush's billet, all right, a, a pick by Richard Bush, which, which is not taught all right, Peter doesn't, you know, share with you the, the method, but he does give you um, exactly where to find it, right? Bush's Billet, okay, from, from Richard Bush. And um, the reason why he, he demoed this particular move is to kind of demonstrate um, a particular idea, all right, for your spectator to fold the billet in the correct way, all right, after they've kind of uh, filled in the card, all right? Because if you were to use other techniques as well, you know, related techniques, right? Such as, you know, AN, all right, which I use in every single show I do. And, you know, I've had this problem happen as well to me personally, right? You you have the card filled in, and then when you take it back, it's folded the wrong way, right? Uh, you know, and you've got, you know, certain outs that you need to go into. But uh, Peter shares with you an idea that uh, pretty much, I think, negates that possibility, I think, almost completely. Peter will also discuss uh, multiple billet routines, all right? Um, you know, things like uh, mental epic style routines, your name and place kind of routines as well. And he will, um, you know, share with you a, a really great subtlety, which I do use as well, all right? Because I first saw of this kind of an idea from Mark Spellman, I believe, uh, in one of his, you know, sets of lecture notes. I think it was a routine called Time is of the Essence. Uh, from, from Mark Spellman, but uh, it's a great idea. And uh, Peter shows you how you can apply it, not to just billets, but also to pads of paper as well, right? If you were to perform this on stage. Then uh, there is a section called the calculator, okay? And it is from this section that I got uh, a routine that I fell in love with, okay? And uh, it forms now uh, the second to last uh, effect. Uh, in my current uh, theatre show, okay? So what, what this is about is, well, Peter talks to you about the, uh, the toxic force, okay? Toxic force, uh, but using a regular, you know, scientific calculator, you know, those really cheap scientific calculators, you know, I, I believe they are available everywhere in the world, you know, primary school kids here, you know, have them as well, right? So he talks about uh, how to use the calculator to create this this kind of a number prediction effect, um, and what I found interesting was also his his rationale, all right, his logic behind using this kind of a calculator as opposed to using your your iPhone, okay, which uh, it did not occur to me, but uh, when he discussed it, it really made sense. And from here, he also shared a routine. I think it's called uh, the candy jar, 
you know, or the sweet jar, uh, which I really, really loved. Okay, and uh, again, I, I'm currently using this effect. It deals with um, an add a number sort of a premise. Okay, and I think it is a great way to kind of uh, motivate uh, an add a number effect, you know, and uh, it, it kind of shares with people a piece of knowledge as well, which I really liked, you know, and uh, he shows you exactly how to perform this routine um, using the, you know, the, the scientific calculator. But there's a great way to end the routine as well, where the whole audience ends up using their own calculators on their own phones as well, which I thought uh, was great because in, in my own shows, when I'm doing add a number effects these days, there is always uh, a way that I, I do it now. Um, it's, well, long story short, people always end with their phones in their own hands with the final answer, okay? Which I thought that was really important and Peter does it uh, really well here as well uh, in a much simpler way than, than I do. And the fifth uh, chapter is something called um, the envelopes, okay? So in this particular chapter, Peter shares with you uh, an envelope peak, okay? Which the conditions are really strong, you know, it, it's kind of like, um, you know, the white dwarf, okay, if you know Bob Cassidy's white dwarf. So what happens is, you know, you hand a kind of a larger, you know, envelope to a, to a spectator, they can hold it up to the light, make sure it's opaque. Uh, you take it back, you remove a small pay envelope, you know, hand it to them, they look at it as well, they cannot see through it. Inside, you remove, a, you know, a white piece of card, right? And from here, you know, you go into kind of a white dwarf, um, uh, kind of a presentation, right? You have the spectator write something on the card, a name perhaps. It is then cleanly uh, reinserted into the pay envelope. Uh, that is inserted into the larger envelope. The larger envelope is folded into half and, you know, the spectators can, you know, look at it again and it's it's truly opaque, right? And then from there, you can go into your reveal. Um, at the end of the whole thing, you know, everything is ripped open and uh, the card is shown to be in there as well and everything can be examined. So this is a great uh, idea to, to know as well, a great handling of, of that kind of an envelope, you know, test conditions um, kind of a effect, right? It's great to know because it's really simple to prepare, right? Um, really simple to prepare. I think you can prepare one, you know, as long as you can find the right envelopes at any, you know, stationery store, you can prepare this in just like 30 seconds, you know? So it's really simple and uh, it, it's great to know and it, well, the conditions and the psychology, you know, and the choreography behind it uh, really puts it up there with, you know, even the, the better kind of prepared envelopes, right, whenever we're performing uh, White Dwarf. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great one to know. So, yeah, you know, those are the five main chapters uh, on this project. And, um, well, long story short, I, I really enjoyed going through the material, you know. Uh, I, I enjoyed it because it's really practical stuff, all right, and with these sets of like stuff that you learn you know from from all the chapters you really can already do a full stage show you know like a 45 minute set perhaps and the material is going to be strong right you've got a good opening some material in, in the center you know some strong mind reading pieces and at the end of the whole show you can also have a really strong number prediction as well right to close the show which it's kind of like my own commercial show at this point, you know, um, but but yeah, you know, it, it really gives you uh, the tools that you need to form a, a full show with a really, really small budget. So while I really enjoyed going through the project, uh, I think the only kind of negative, you know, that I can, you know, anticipate, right, from, from uh, you know, viewers or buyers of this project is that there is really nothing new that is taught on this project, all right? And, and Peter and Lewis, you know, do also uh, mention that, right? There is nothing like, you know, brand new. There's no, you know, groundbreaking new method, you know, or, or anything like that. These are just really applications and handlings of tried, tested, solid mentalism uh, material, you know? And this is the kind of thing that I like, all right? It, it's just really practical stuff, you know, and I think it's important that, um, you know, all mentalists are, you know, familiar, right? Professional mentalists, we are familiar with these sorts of approaches because this is really what, what it's about, right? It's, it's arming yourself with knowledge, you know? And the reason I think why, you know, we can just walk into a stationery store, you know, buy stuff and walk out, do some prep work and do a full stage show, you know, a professional level stage show is because as mentalists, we are not armed with props, 
right? We are armed with knowledge. Well, our props are really just all up here. You know, we have knowledge, right? And those are things that are worth knowing, worth paying for, worth studying as well, I think. So, um, you know, it's nothing new in the sense that you're not going to learn new things that you're not aware of, you know, uh, in terms of method and technique, especially if you're a well-versed performer, you know, you're a really experienced mentalist, you know, you're not going to watch this video and, you know, like, wow, that's a new method, right? But if you are a professional performer, I think you will, uh, you know, kind of pick up a few really interesting ideas, you know, bits of, you know, gold dust, right, here and there, which are readily, really applicable to your own work. Uh, almost immediately, you know, they are ideas that you can immediately kind of plug into your own show. So, um, yeah, you know, while they may not be new ideas, all right, um, they are really great applications and, and really interesting handlings uh, of those classic techniques. So I want to thank uh, Louis Laval for really kindly uh, sharing this project with me. Uh, and if you would like to pick up a copy of Lost uh, by Peter Turner for yourselves, I will leave the link for Mindhouse in the description box down below. All right, but that's all for today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it and I got something out of it as well. Uh, till the next episode, uh, do take care of yourselves. Stay safe, have fun with your magic and your mentalism, and I will see you on the next one.